Hey guys, my name is Simi Dre. I'm a broadcaster, an actress, an activist, and also a foodie. <laughs> so I came to Nigeria four years ago. Um, I started working at Cool TV. I worked at Spice TV. I worked at radio stations in the UK as well. There was Callan FM. Um, currently, I'm here at The Beat 99.9 FM, and I'm also hosting a brand new TV show called Stardom Nigeria. In terms of my acting career, I have been on Tinsel, I have been on The Governor, which was on Ebony Live TV as well. I played a 12, 13 year old girl in a movie called Happy Father's Day. And we literally just finished shooting the second, um, se the sequel to it called Another Father's Day. The story of how I became a professional in my field was quite a Oh, bumpy one. So initially I wanted to study psychology in university and after my A-levels I submitted my applications, I got admission into a couple of universities and then I decided this was not what I wanted to do. So I sat down with my mom and we went through a list of all the courses done in the UK and I found, you know, the course Broadcasting, Journalism and Communications. So I went to university without a clue as to what I was going to do. But, um, we, you know, we learned how to talk on radio, on television, we learned journalism for newspapers, um, websites, so on and so forth. And I told myself that, you know what, I want to become a presenter. Now, the funny thing is, I'm a very, very shy person, um, but it was still something I wanted to do. Like, I love being in front of the camera. So during my summer holidays of my first year in university, I came over to Nigeria and I did an internship here. I worked at High TV before it closed down. Um, and then I told myself that once I graduated, I wanted to come back to the motherland, come back to my Amala. And here I am, four years later. So the way I learned my vocation, obviously I went to university for three years, studied broadcast journalism and communications. I got a first class, my parents were very, very proud. But apart from that, I did a lot of work experience. I mean, um, in my three years in university, I worked in radio stations as well. I remember the first time I went on air on radio, I had a show um, with my friend and we were so scared, we were so shy. Um, we kept on making a few mistakes, but I think mistakes are all part of the learning process. Um, I came to Nigeria and I started working at Cool TV and I think that's where I sort of found myself as a presenter and found my personality. Um, and then now working at Peter Femme, I've been able to refine it a lot more. And I think, you know, working with both, um, in both television and radio helps you become a better presenter. So I didn't necessarily practice a lot in front of the mirror. I did a few times, but then as well, I would go on YouTube and watch vocal training, um, you know, activities and things to do. Some tongue rolls as well to make sure you speak more eloquently, I think. <laughs> I don't know too well. I was just literally going on YouTube and learning as much as I could. Um, but definitely training in front of the mirror is a fantastic thing to do so you can learn your mannerisms. Another thing I would do whenever I shot a show or you know so on and so forth i would listen to myself and watch myself if i didn't like things maybe i was turning my head around too much you know making too many gestures with my hands i would tell myself and try and nip it in the butt <laughs> I think it was when I did the internship at High TV. I started out as a researcher, so I'd basically help develop shows, do research, write the scripts, so on and so forth. And then they finally gave me my big break. So I was told to interview a celebrity and I remember the very first person I interviewed, it was Daryl Aydin. So I was absolutely terrified. I was so shy, so nervous, but Daryl made it so easy for me. He was so funny, so jovial, and he kept on encouraging me, which was so important. And afterwards, I, I felt really, really good about myself. I don't think Daryl will even remember this. If you do, shout out to you. <laughs> But um, yeah, afterwards I was like, yeah, I can do this. I had a lot of fun. This is what I want to do in the future. And ever since then, I've literally just been pursuing my dreams. Also, the people I look up to. I mean, obviously, our mama at the top, Mo Abudu, who has done it for all women. She's shown us that, you know, we African women, we're intelligent, we're smart, and we can be incredibly successful in the media industry. 
I also love people like Bonang Matiba um, from South Africa. Stephanie Coco is somebody I would watch a lot while I was still in school. Um, so each and every single one of these ladies, you know, inspire me and make me want to be better and maybe own my own station in the long run. Also, IK. IK is absolutely incredible. He is an inspiration to me and he challenges me. Whenever I watch him on stage, he challenges me to be better. I'm like, ah, ah, me too. I have to go and grip the audience like that, make them laugh like that and be, you know, informative, but also um, entertaining. The personal sacrifices I've had to make to make my dream come alive has been number one, time. Um, I have given up a lot of my time to do my job. I mean, Christmas just came and went. I wasn't able to see my family. I wasn't able to spend Christmas with them um, because I was working. So I've given up also the privilege of being anonymous um, on social media and even going out in the streets, I still have to present myself in a certain way. I mean, I remember when I was much younger, I would love to go out and party and so on and so forth and now that I'm older I feel that you know I have a certain duty to the especially the young girls who who follow me and who look up to me so I try and act more responsible and I think that's a sacrifice I've had to make but it's also a positive sacrifice because it's helped me as well in the long run. Normally people ask me this and I'm like <laughs> my work schedule is so up and down all over the place. I mean, I could literally start working at one o'clock in the morning and finish the next day at one o'clock in the morning. So 24 hours. There's some weeks that I am, you know, very, very free. I may, might just have my radio show to do and I'm done by 12 o'clock. And other weeks, other days, I'm literally completely busy. I mean, there have been some days that I've been so tired that when my alarm goes off at, you know, three o'clock in the morning, I'm just like, I want to cry and I'm like, why me? Why me? Why me? But at the end of the day, I mean, this is what I want to do and this is what I enjoy doing and I wouldn't give it up for anything. Um, the way I've given back to the society, so I have joined a um, school, it's an adult literacy school. Um, I think it's the first of its kind in Nigeria, so we basically train um, adults to read and write and nobody is too old we have in the class for example we have people who are 50 60 years old who literally can't read and write and I think that education is such an important thing it is so important my father himself is a professor and I would like to go back to university and get maybe a PhD and so on and so forth um, but unfortunately a lot many many Nigerians don't have access to good quality education so at least the small the small, small thing I can do is to just, you know, share my knowledge um, with, you know, a few people for free, absolutely free. But we're hoping to obviously get a lot more funding and sponsorship. So if you want to donate, feel free to. Um, if I'm going to leave Nigeria, it will probably just be for a vacation and I'll be right back. I mean, I love Nigeria despite the issues we have. I mean, I went back to England for Christmas last year to spend time with my family and I was there for two weeks and after the first week, England just didn't feel like home anymore. Even though I grew up there, I was born there. Nigeria is home for me and Nigeria has so much potential and I know like a lot of people are struggling right now and a lot of people see the difficulties more. but. At the end of the day, Nigeria is our country. We won't be accepted properly, properly anywhere else. And I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, and maybe it will happen in the future that, you know, we can all come together, politicians and, you know, the laymen included, and just help to actually move this country forward and actually unleash Nigeria's true potential. Hey guys, my name is Simi Dre. I'm young and I'm Nigerian.